Hey guys, it's Mrs. Dam Rauer. To celebrate Black History Month, I have a bedtime story with you about Melba Doretta Liston. She is an African American leader. She was the first multi talented jazz uh, player. She was one of the first women of any race to become a world class trombone player, composer, and arranger. This story is called Little Melba and Her Big Trombone. It's by Katherine Russell Brown, and the illustrations are by Frank Morrison. Little Melba and Her Big Trombone. Spread the word. Little Melba Doretta Liston was something special. The year she was born was 1926. The place was Kansas City, where you could reach out and feel the music. The avenues were lined with jazz clubs, street bands, and folks harmony on every corner. All the hot music makers made sure they had a gig in Kansas City. The music was pretty popular around where she's from. From as far back as her memory would go, Melba loved the sounds of music, blues, jazz, and gospel rhythms, dance in her head, a plink of a guitar, the hum of the bass, the thrum thrum of a drum, the ping ping of a piano, and the tremble of a sweet horn. You can see her in bed thinking about the different sounds of music. Notes stirred and rhythms bubbled all through Melba's home. She couldn't get enough. Music was always on her mind. She daydreamed about beats and lyrics. Music was on Melba's mind at night too, when she should have been fast asleep. Melba loved to hum along with the radio. Sometimes the music sounded so good, she cupped her ear to the majestic and closed her eyes. She especially loved Fats Waller with his growly voice and booming piano. Who's your favorite singer? Do you like to listen to any music? The, the player piano came alive when Melba's kinfolk stopped by. While Melba pedaled, her aunties danced around the room. Now take a look, she's got her ear up. To something in the picture. You know what that is? Do you put your ear up to anything when you're listening close to music? Or maybe today we put something on our ears to listen to the music? What do you think? With all that music flying by, Melba wanted to create her own sounds. When she was seven years old, she decided to sign up for music class at school. What instrument could I play? Melba wondered. At the traveling music store, Melba eyed a long, funny-looking horn. That one, she cried, it's beautiful. A trombone? Mama Lucille frowned. It's big, and you're a little girl. Please, Melba begged. Mama Lucille bought the shiny trombone on the spot. She couldn't say no to her only child. Melba beamed far from ear to ear and squeezed her new friend. She beamed. Take a look at her face. What do you think it means to beam? She's smiling so big. She is so happy. And that night on the porch, Melba listened to Grandpa John playing his guitar. This time, she had her own music maker. Grandpa John showed Melba how to cradle the horn. She tried to push out the slide, but her arm was too short. She had to tilt her head sideways and stretch out her right arm. Melba gave the horn a mighty blow. Honk, honk, honk. Oh, it sounded bad, like a howling dog. I'm no good, Grandpa, Melba said, tearing up. If you can blow, you can play, Grandpa John said. Now stand up straight and blow steady. Melba stayed up real late and practiced until she could play a simple tune 
all by herself. Have you ever heard the sound of a trombone? If you haven't, you might check it out and see if you can listen in so you can recognize the sound she's talking about. Even with her keen ear, teaching herself to play the trombone was no piece of cake. But Malba kept blowing her horn, getting better day by day. The cool brass of the horn felt swell on her fingers. Before long, Melba and her horn were making magic. She was only eight when the local radio station invited her to play a solo. Are any of you eight or almost eight listening? Maybe you're older than eight? Imagine being invited on the radio. Mama Lucille and Grandpa John were so proud as they watched little Melba play her big trombone. Wow, she really spent a lot of time and hard work to play. Hard times hit rock bottom in 1937. That's when Melba and her mother moved to Los Angeles. The long train ride took them five states west and worlds away from Kansas City. Melba's new teachers discovered she was as smart as a whip. Her test scores were so high, the principal skipped her up from sixth grade to eighth. Wow, she is a hard worker when she was learning to play the trombone and in school. She works hard at everything she does. That's what it sounds like. What do you think? Are there things that you work really hard at? Maybe an instrument or certain subjects in school? I think we all have ones that we work pretty hard at and wonder what yours are. In high school, Melba joined Alma Hightower's famous after-school music club. Melba quickly became the star player in the club's band, the Mel Melodic Dot. The other club members struggled to keep up with Melba. Jealous boys called her bad names. She tried not to care, but way down deep, the names hurt. Melba used her horn to turn all those hurt feelings into soulful music. If you look closely in the picture, you can see the classmates' responses to her on their faces. What do you notice about their faces? They don't look too pleased. Melba's talent kept growing. She began writing music too. Then in 1943, when she was 17, Melba was invited to tour the country with a new band led by trumpet player Gerald Wilson. Go meet the world, Mama Lucille said and hugged Melba goodbye. You have my blessing. Melba could feel it in her bones. The jazz scene was calling her name. Traveling with the band was a thrill. Each day, I'm sorry, each city from Salt Lake to New York was an eyeful of something new. Melba became a master musician. She composed and arranged music, spinning rhythms, harmonies, and melodies into gorgeous songs. And when Melba played the trombone, her bold notes and one-of-a-kind sound mesmerized the crowd. Still, Melba was lonely. She was the only woman in the band. Some of the men were cruel. Others acted as if she wasn't there. Melba let the music in her head keep her company. Rough times came when Melba traveled down south with singer Billie Holiday and her band. Some white folks didn't show good manners towards folks with brown skin. Hotel rooms were hard to come by and the band members often had to sleep on the bus. Can you imagine having to sleep on the bus just because your skin color is brown or darker. Mm. Restaurants didn't always want their business. In the clubs, audiences sometimes just sat and stared at the band or didn't show up at all. Feeling discouraged, Melba almost walked away from her trombone for good. 
what do you think about that? Should she give up because people weren't treating her the way they should? I don't think so. But Melba's fans wouldn't let her quit. By the 1950s, all the cool jazz musicians wanted some Melba magic. Dizzy Gillespie, Duke Ellington, Quincy Jones, and more. They wanted to be on the bandstand with Melba and her divine horn. They wanted to play Melba's music. Melba and her music trotted around the globe, dazzling audiences and making headlines in Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. All her life, Melba kept composing and arranging music, kept making her trombone sing. Spread the word, Melba Doretta Liston was something special. Take a look at her on that last page. What do you notice between the... What do you notice between this last page compared to the very beginning and even the cover? How has she changed? What has she been through? Have you experienced anything like that? Where you had to work really hard, almost felt like giving up, or people not being very kind to you when you're trying to do your very best, the things that you love? Thank you guys for joining us and joining me while we read and learned about Melba. I hope you have a great night. And if you're interested, check her out and look into uh, learn more about her and some of our other Black and African-American leaders. Have a good night.